Hey, welcome to Fencing Flops, where we take a look at modern fencing as portrayed in media. I'm a fencing enthusiast who has done competitive foil for seven years, five years for competitive saber, and some epee done here and there. I've acted as a volunteer coach at three different colleges, in all totaling about three years, and I'm a certified ref in all three weapons. This week on the strip is Brooklyn Nine-Nine from the Wednesday Incident episode. So let's get to the point and see what it has to offer. <laughs> Real quick, I want to make it clear, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> just a bunch of normal worries. Are you sure we're talking about last Wednesday? Positive. I haven't seen him since. You haven't? Uh-uh. I'm sorry, I need to leave. Excuse me? Kevin! Alright, so most of what was going on was in the background. Um, I'm going to take a closer look. I think the only thing that I saw that was in the foreground that I would like to mention is how this guy is holding his foil, and that's what they're doing is foil. The only reason why this is a thing that I kind of want to bring up is because if this is a competitive foil, meaning it's electric, it's rated to be used in a tournament, it's designed to be plugged into a machine, most fencers, particularly ones who have a lot of experience, would not be holding it like that. The reason for this is foils have a barrel that has a spring at the end of the tip, and obviously the more that something is used, in this case the spring being compressed and decompressed, the more that happens, the sooner it can wear out. And that kind of thing can be difficult to fix, and, you know, just the less often you have to replace a part, the better. Again, this is a small thing. I'm kind of being nitpicky about how he's holding it. But I don't know of any fencers who have been doing this for very long to hold it like that, uh, you know, against the ground. But it could be a practice weapon. Who knows? This does look to be, you know, in the middle of the class and he's not really doing much, so possibly. And unfortunately, the way he's holding it, I can't tell if it's a electric weapon or not. It doesn't look as though he's suited up for electric. Everyone in the background, and this guy as well, is all suited up for dry, meaning they have no electric equipment. But if it's a lesson or an open practice or something like that, even if you're not suited up for electric, usually the only time that students will be using dry foils, a foil that is not electric, is when they don't own one and they're borrowing from the club. That usually only happens if you're taking classes at a beginner level. So even though he's not suited up for electric, I find it doubtful that Someone with really any sort of experience, they don't really say how much experience he has, but he's, you know, not in a beginner class. So it's easy to assume that he would have enough experience to not even own a dry foil anymore. Now this is assuming that this is how it is for every single person in the fencing community, which obviously I don't know. So I'm not going to say that this is surely the case. I'm just saying that most likely that would be an electric foil in which case you wouldn't really be doing that. But let's get to the background. From what I see, this is another example of extras who have been hired to sort of make it look like fencing and have maybe received a few lessons because there are some people trying out things like that. So the people in the background, they are doing certain movements that are fencing moves. But they're doing it slowly enough, and there's usually not enough focus on them that it's difficult to tell if they actually know how to do them or they just practice them for the sake of this scene. But I'm inclined to say that they don't actually know how, purely because of how it's set up. This is just a bunch of random people in a room who are just there to act as a backdrop. Because there's no organization here. There's It doesn't look like there's anyone in charge. They're just kind of... Everyone is placed very randomly. There's two people in the back here, there's a lady here, there's three people over here. There's no real structure to it, and they're all, like, facing different angles. Like, this lady is 
facing off like 45 degrees. These two people are facing, you know, close to like 30 degrees on a line as opposed to these two in the back. There's, they're kind of placed randomly and there's no real structure to it. And I feel like anyone who has been in a club where they fence on strips that are straight lines, this kind of thing would seem very odd to do. If they had actual experience in a club, they would automatically go back to those habits of fencing in, you know, straight lines, of being up against one another rather than facing each other at weird angles. This is basically what everyone is doing is not coordinated. They're all in their own little world, and so they don't really care which way they're facing. So that right there is a tip-off that these are more extras. Yeah, I've tried looking more and more into it. There's very little that people are doing, so it's, it's so little that it's difficult to tell if it's legitimate or not. I think what this guy was doing... Actually looking at it closer, I take that back. I don't think they really know what they're doing. Because one person is defending, but with distance, and the other is trying to find the blade anyways between these two. There's very little that's going on, but from what I saw taking a closer look at it, it's hard to tell, but I think they're just waving their blades around. So that, plus the fact that there's no structure or real sense to how things are being orchestrated in the background, I don't think any of these people are fencers. I don't think this is even taking place in a real club. Although I could be wrong about that because they're showing very little of it. But just from... I mean, most clubs have some kind of permanent strips laid out. Even if it's not some sort of metal strip or something laid down, they'll still have some sort of permanent way of marking out where the strip is supposed to go because that's the thing that you practice on all the time, so why wouldn't you have something that's just there all the time if you owned at least a little bit of space that belongs only to the club and is not rented out to someone else? And even if you're doing this in a public gym where that gym is shared by a bunch of different people, it's still pretty easy to lay out a strip with tape or even use some of the lines that are already there as just part of the gym and just use that as a reference point and, you know, move along that and sort of keep it in your mind that, you know, this is the straight line, so we're just going to, you know, be right next to that. That works for practice. So these people are practicing, but there's absolutely no reference as to where they're supposed to stay or where a strip is. So, even though I can't say for certain because they've shown so little of it, I don't think this is even a fencing club. Everything else, though, the equipment, the sort of general layout, is not bad. In a lot of the forms that I've seen, there are things here and there that, you know, kind of tipped me off that this isn't legitimate. But I will say they tried. That, plus the fact that they don't really focus on it, makes it pretty easy to forgive, I suppose. Yeah, not real fencers, not a real club, just a bunch of people, they put the gear on, they put them in the room, and maybe gave them a few lessons and said, make it look okay. Ooh, I, <laughs> I was about to stop, but then I noticed something at the last minute. So before I mentioned there was this girl in the background that was behind these two guys, I just realized it looks like she's doing some kind of a drill with someone else. I don't know if they're actually fencing or just doing a drill, but either way, there's a guy, or, you know, a fencer, attacking this girl, who is not wearing a mask, and he is. So that's a huge red flag. I've said it in the past, you absolutely need gear. You absolutely need safety gear and especially a mask you can get hit in the chest even without a jacket and while that's not advisable usually the most you'll get is a bruise but getting attacked to the face like without a mask that's that's a lawsuit waiting to happen 
and hospital bills and whatever if it's, you know, anywhere near like an eye or something. So before it was just inexperienced people who were just kind of doing the bare minimum, whatever. But then they had a masked fencer full on attacking a non-masked fencer. That is a no-go. On one hand, that's like the only real red flag that they have. Everything else was just kind of, eh, maybe. But on the other, that's like, you know, if that ever happened in a real club, someone would notice very quickly, and they would step in and just... I guarantee you the two people would be in trouble, both of them, because they both should know better. Okay, so Captain Holt leaves fencing and heads north. If we really want to do this, we gotta get in his head. We have to be Captain Holt. Hello, Gina. How does this sound? Captain Holt, is that you? Oh, no, it's Jake nailing your voice exactly. Right? The trick is to find a key phrase you know exactly how he'd say. Mine is, Peralta, that's enough! Seriously, Jake, this is getting scary. Ha, 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 ha! Come with me, young wise assistant. Let us walk in this direction. Oh, a hot dog. All right, I thought it was done, but there's one last little bit here, but it's very small because they're, again, in the background. But I can tell that these are the same people because there are two things that really give them away. First of all, this guy here, he gets attacked and then he stops as if he's just been hit, which technically he has physically been hit, but it was, it was very clearly a slap. It was with the side of the blade. And foil is a thrust only weapon and they're definitely, you know, they haven't changed weapons. They're still fencing foil. So that kind of thing does not register on a machine, so there's no reason to do it. It's it's just one of those things that is not ever taught because it's just plain wrong. You're supposed to hit with the tip of the weapon, and if you don't, then that's the same as missing. So it doesn't matter if it's a physical contact, if it's a slap, it doesn't set anything off, nothing, you know, the action between the fencers doesn't get stopped. It's just, you just missed. So a slap occurs, but he treats it as if it was an action that could be halted, like it, like it was a complete attack. That's definitely something that I think a complete novice who has maybe only been doing fencing for literally a few weeks, that's the only person that I can think of who would be doing this. And then he's also holding it wrong. I've brought this up in past videos, but he's using what's called a French grip, but he's holding it slightly wrong. It's not atrocious, but it's something that would be picked up by any instructor very quickly off the bat which is that the pommel, which is the very end of the grip, is past his wrist when it needs to be held on the inside so that the blade is at less of an angle to the arm. The blade is supposed to be held in line with the arm as much as possible, mostly in a very neutral position. So if the pommel is on the inside of the wrist, like shown here, then that's correct. But if it's on the outside of the wrist, like shown here, then automatically there's an extra angle to the blade that you then have to compensate for if you keep holding it wrong. So those were two things that I saw later on in the episode that I just wanted to bring up. So that is the end of all the fencing that I could find in this episode. It wasn't very much, to be sure, but it was something. It was very clear that there was no real experienced fencing here, but they had the right equipment. It was clear that they actually tried and they didn't focus on anything, which meant it's a little bit easier to forgive mistakes here and there. I, I really wish I knew more about how studios hire people for this kind of thing. If they have to hire extras or if they, or if it actually would be easier to, you know, like recruit from your local fencing club, which in a city like this, I know for a fact there's at least a few. Yeah, I'll probably try and find out more about that. But for now, 
I would say this gets a pretty good score. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7 out of 10. It wasn't totally terrible, I suppose. But that's also easy to forgive because, like I said, it wasn't really focused on it. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of the new introduction. I had some help trying to come up with something, and I don't know if it is actually that great. So if you liked it, let me know. But that's the end of the video, and I'll see you later. Bye.